It's a troubling time for the LGBTQ plus community with threats of violence and a wave of homophobic and transphobic laws promoting prompting the human rights campaign to declare a national emergency in the United States. But there is one big reason to celebrate. Here in Boston, the Pride Parade is finally back. It returns this weekend for the first time in three years after the pandemic forced cancellations in 2020 and 2021. And in 2022, the former Boston Pride organization dissolved over complaints of racism and transphobia. Now a new group is in charge, Boston Pride for the People. President Adriana Boland joins me now. Welcome, Adriana. Happy Pride to you. Thank you. Happy Pride to you, Sue. So tell me, first of all, what's new about this Pride Committee? And um, I know that people have been making the association to the pop-up Pride last year, but tell me who Boston Pride for the People is. So Boston Pride for the People started last September. And what we started from was a year of a lot of people saying, wow, we are the ones. We are the ones that have to show up and be what we've been asking for now that this organization has dissolved. And so you mentioned Pop-Up Pride, which a number of organizers, some that are um, affiliated with Boston Pride from the people and others, came together to a, do a Pop-Up Pride celebration. And there have been different activations throughout the city. But after those activations and all the work that people did, we thought, okay, Let's come together and think about what this could actually look like, what we might need to do, and how we could go about this. And where I loved that we started was doing some visioning to understand, and this gets to the what's different or what I see as different is what our foundation has been. So our focus as an organization is to plan the yearly parade and festival, one, and two, to uplift the things going out, going on throughout our city that are led by LGBTQ leaders and organizers and organizations throughout the year. Um, and we do that through four main ways, through commemoration. We recognize that Pride started as a protest. People risked their lives, lost their lives, and experienced a lot of harm for us to live a lot of the freedoms that we live right now, and we want to honor that and, sh and, and show that. The second is education. There are a lot of freedoms that we as a community and in our communities are able to experience and there's a lot of oppression that we're still experiencing. Our communities are still under attack. Folks in the trans community, our youth are still um, fighting for it to be themselves, for affirming care. So there's still education to be done and we want that to also be at the foundation. So commemoration, education, empowerment. There's so much change that needs to happen in our community, in our communities, and we are the ones to make that change that we can't be the ones if we don't have the resources, the access, and aren't empowered and put in leadership roles and supported in those roles to actually make change. So we want whatever activities and things we do to empower our community. And last is celebration. We're worthy of joy. And there's so much to be happy about. And there's so much joy that can be shared and spread. And not having a celebration like this since 2019, um, there's so many there's so much to be said, um, so much to be said. So what's different is really what's at the foundation that I shared of everything we do. We see that as different than it's been and feel like it can grow. So one of the challenges that you've had, your organization has had, you know, I've, I've been joking with folks, I'm an institutionalist, right? So I'm about take, you know, you got a problem, go to that institution, go on the inside and seep into it and try and change it that way. Yeah. Um, that opportunity wasn't necessarily available to you folks planning this pride celebration. You had to build stuff from scratch. Yeah. And you had brought a lot of people to the table, a lot of consti constituencies. How has it been navigating building something from scratch in this world that we're in right now? It's a lot. It's a lot. And it's more than I knew. And I think we as an organizing committee knew when we said, yes, we're passionate. We love this work. It's our community. It's in our heart space. And so we signed up for it. But yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to be inclusive. It's a lot of work to be accessible. It, it takes a lot of work. And um, I'd love for things to all happen at once. And what I'm also learning, what we're learning, is it doesn't happen all at once. And so how do you keep the work going and set goals and, and build capacity to accomplish what you want to continue to accomplish? But it's been a beautiful process to connect and engage with people and hear people feeling happy that they're actually being asked what they what pride looks like for them and what they want to see. If folks want to come into the city this weekend and celebrate Boston Pride, what are some of the things that they can expect? Two, okay, so a couple of things. 
So our parade starts at 11 a.m. It starts in Copley, marches down to Boston Common. In Boston Common, there are two uh, there are two festival areas. One at Boston Common that are all ages. We have different areas for youth, aging older adults, families. We have a QT BIPOC marketplace. Um, we have a BIPOC marketplace. There are so many different areas. Our City Hall Plaza location is uh, 21 plus, and we have vendors there. We have a stage there, um, a beer garden. There's just so much there. Quiet areas. We're trying to create spaces for everyone, and there's also so many things going on in the city. And so, just we're we're seeking to spread joy. In the I city. know that one of the, the 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 walks that you talked and talks that you walked was. Uh, in- Involving yourself with businesses and organizations that aren't just here for the money or just aren't here to wave a flag, what what are some of the things that, that, that the standards that you applied to people participating in the Pride celebrations? What's really important to us in building genuine allies in this work with partners is ensuring that they haven't contributed to any anti-LGBTQ legislation, anti-abortion legislation. We look at indices like the HRC index and other disability and inequality index to see where these businesses are and use that as a framework to guide our interactions and partnerships with them. So um, is pride still important? Absolutely. To me, pride is still important. And through our planning of this, to me, it's important to our city, too. Talk about what the message is that you would like straight allies who come into the city or who are watching and want to participate. What's the one message you would like to leave a pride celebration with? Center our LGBTQ plus community. This is a space to celebrate and center our community. That's what we want our activities to look like. And we want people to engage um, and support our community in that way. So as a straight ally or anyone coming to support this work, show up and center members of our community. And there's so many ways to do that. Well, you look very rested for someone who has a big event coming up. So I uh, appreciate you. you and all the work that Boston Pride for the People is doing. Adriana Boland, thanks so much. Happy Pride. Thank you so much. Happy Pride.